In this video, I show you the easiest way to understand the windfall elimination provision and how it applies to you. Along the way, I will answer five very common questions that are asked right here on the channel. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt. The windfall elimination provision was enacted in 1983 as a result of a loophole in the way people were paid their social security benefits. This loophole allowed the recipient of a special pension called a non-covered pension to receive both the pension and full social security benefits. All that was required was that the person worked a job that was covered by social security for a certain period of time. And when they worked this job, they had full social security benefits. This combination allowed the recipient to get the best of the social security system, specifically designed for the low income earner, as well as their full pension on their non-covered employment. The first question that comes up from most people at this point is what is a non-covered pension or what is non-covered employment? In essence, a non-covered pension or non-covered employment is a pension that is derived from work where the recipient did not contribute to the social security retirement system. This usually relates to a job that is covered by the state. Think of a teacher, a firefighter, or a police officer as an example. This will all become very clear in a moment, but you need to know one point, and that is Social Security's primary mission is to protect those most in need, the low income earner. This should come as no surprise, even the name Social Security suggests this. Because the way Social Security is structured, the more you pay in, the less you get back for every additional dollar contributed. Let me explain. The Social Security Administration taxes 12.4% of covered earnings. You pay 6.2% and your employer pays 6.2%. The tax stays in place until you reach the earnings cap. In 2023, for example, the earnings cap is $160,200. So if you earned this amount or more, you and your employer collectively will contribute $19,865 in tax to the Social Security Administration. On the other end, the poverty line for a four-person family in the United States is $27,250, according to the Federal Register. This family and the employer contribute a collective number of $3,379 to the Social Security Fund. Now, I'm just generalizing for the moment, but usually someone at the higher end of the income spectrum stays there their entire working life. This is because they arrange their work to reach that higher income level. Think of a doctor, for example. The Social Security Administration uses something called bend points to direct the lion's share of the Social Security payment at retirement to those who need it most. So bend points can help you if you're a low-income earner, but they also take their toll on someone if they fall under the windfall elimination provision. The SSA uses a two-step process to determine your Social Security payment if you are a standard contributor to Social Security, and it uses a three-step process if you are one that has non-covered earnings. Step one, the SSA will take your historical earnings, your 35 best years of historical earnings, and index them into today's dollars using something called the average indexed monthly earnings. If, for example, you were born in 1957 and you were retiring in 2023, let's say you earned $10,000 in 1992. The adjustment factor for someone with your birth year and your retirement point in time is 2.19. So if you earned $10,000 in 1992, that 10,000 would be adjusted up to $21,900 today. If this was 10 years later, 2002, the adjustment factor would be 1.51, which means your $10,000 would be adjusted to $15,100 today. The same adjustment would be completed for every year that you work, and the SSA would take your best 35 years in today's dollars and discard the rest. They'd take your 35 years, divide it by 35, and this would be your average indexed annual earnings. Divide that by 12, and you have your average indexed monthly earnings. And if you work less than 35 years, the SSA will add zeros to come up with 35 years and divide that total by 35. So let's say you're the head of the family working just above the poverty line, 27,500 per year, and you worked 20 years instead of 35 years. The SSA would take your 27,500 multiplied by 20 years divided by 35, and they'd come up with an annual indexed annual earnings amount of $15,714. They divide that by 12 and they come up with $1,309 per month. 
and doing the same exercise for the doctor, he or she would have $91,542 as an annual adjusted income. That's $7,628 per month. The next step is to engage in step two. You take that number and you run it through the social security event points. And for 2023, the SSA will pay you 90% of your first $1,115, 32% of the next $5,606, and 15% of the remaining amount up to $7,196. So the person at the low end of the curve will get 90% times $1,115. That's $1,003.50. 32% of the remaining $194. That's $62.08. Their total social security payment at full retirement age is $1,065.58. And the doctor, by the way, will receive 90% times $1,115, which is $1,003.50. 32% times $5,606, which is $1,793.12. And 15% of the balance, that's $907.00. So the final bend point is $136.05. The total the doctor receives is $2,932.67. So the doctor receives 2.75 times the payment of the individual at the poverty line, even though he or she contributed 5.83 times the amount. This is how the social security system is supposed to work. But here's how it affects you if you fall under the WEP, the Windfall Elimination Provision. Let's say for the sake of this video, you're a police officer working in New York and your earnings fall under the non-covered earnings provision that we talked about earlier. So there is no contribution to Social Security for the amount that you earn. There is a contribution to a separate pension. But let's also assume that you have another job and that job allows you to earn a certain sum of money which is taxed by Social Security. Often this arrangement happens when someone works two different careers. They start off working in one career and then at some point in time they change to another. Let's assume that you worked for the first 20 years as say a machinist and you earn $27,500. You'll see why we're using that exact number in just a second. And the back half of your career you worked as a police officer and when you retired your final year you earned $60,000. And let's assume that the state of New York pays you 50% of your final year's salary as your pension. So you take home $30,000 a year or $2,500 per month. You'd expect to get $2,500 a month from your police retirement. And because you contributed the exact same amount to Social Security as the family that was slightly above the poverty line, that payment you would expect would be the same amount. So you'd expect to get an additional $1,065.58 per month on top of your $2,500 a month police pension. But the SSA makes a distinction in this scenario. Instead of getting 90% of the first $1,115, you get 40% of the first $1,115. This means you'll get 40% times $1,115 or $446 at that first bend point. The family that had the same Social Security contribution as you over the same amount of time will receive $1,003.50. The difference between what you get from the first bend point and what they get is $557.50. Now many people at this point say, that's not fair. I contributed the same amount to Social Security as that other family, yet I only get 40% of the 1115 and they get 90%. Is there anything that you can do to change this? Well, sort of, perhaps. Up until this point, the SSA has said, we're reserving that 90% for the family that needs it most, but you have a pension, and that pension allows you to have a greater economic outcome than that other family, despite the fact that you both contributed equally to Social Security. But can you work your way out of this? Well, yes. Under certain circumstances, the SSA will allow you to work your way out of this. Using a predetermined schedule of minimum income, they will allow you to earn 5% per year beyond 20 years, which eventually can get you back to that full 90% year at 30 years. But you have to hit the scheduled income numbers. The scheduled minimum income that you need to earn, by the way, is called substantial earnings and you need 30 years of substantial earnings to get back to the 90% number. Not coincidentally, the 2022 number is 27,300. 
So if your income in 2022 is over 27,300, that counts as one of the 30 years, as an example. It was also lower in historical years. Using 1992 as an example, again, the number was $10,350. And of course, as you get closer and closer to the current year, the substantial earnings threshold gets higher and higher. And conversely, the further back you go, the lower the threshold is. If you had 25 years of substantial earnings instead of 20, then you would multiply the first bend point by 65%. That's 40% plus 25%, 5% per year for the extra five years. And if you had 30 years of substantial earnings, you get the full 90%. A common way to get to 30 years, by the way, is let's say you're a teacher and you have your summers off and you have your weekends off. A lot of times teachers will take second jobs to supplement their income and it wouldn't be that hard to get to the substantial earnings thresholds for the years that you're working part-time. But let's say that you don't want to work nights, weekends, and summers to get to 30 years of substantial earnings. The SSA has a downside protection mechanism called the 50% test. And that simply means that they will not lower your social security payment by more than 50% of your pension payment. So for conversation's sake, let's say that your pension payment was $500 a month, not $2,500 a month, the maximum they could remove from bend point number one would be $250. That's 50% of $500. One common question that comes up is, does my social security statement reflect the fact that I have covered and non-covered earnings? The answer is no. So when you see your social security projected monthly payment, that does not take into account the fact that you have non-covered earnings. So don't be fooled, the SSA has not made the adjustment. Another common question is, does this adjustment affect spousal benefits, survivor benefits, and dependent benefits? Yes, it does, because all of those benefits are based on the amount that you receive on your social security payment. A final question that comes up is, what's the difference between the WEP, the windfall elimination provision, and the government pension offset. The WEP relates to the benefits that are paid to the primary insured when they have non-covered earnings. The government pension offset, the GPO, relates to the spousal or survivor benefit when the spouse has non-covered earnings from the government. They are different. One is the primary benefit, one is the spousal benefit, and in a future video, I'll discuss the GPO. If you like this video, please make sure you click the like button YouTube uses the number of likes in its algorithm to raise a video in the search results, and I want to help as many people as possible. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.